Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome back to the shop. Welcome back to the channel. Um, want to show you guys uh, something today that I've been seeing a lot of people ask about lately uh, on Facebook and, and other places and actually even in some other some on in the comments of some of my other videos. So today we're working on a stock deuce. This is an 87 Air Force deuce, one of the ones I've got. And uh, I'm going to show you how to go about uh, deleting the flame heater. Now, I'm not actually going to do it. Uh, I don't have all the stuff I need to do it on this truck yet, but I'm going to walk you through the process of doing it and tell you what you need. So, um, as I said, stock deuce. Uh, still got the heater, which is kind of in the way. You don't really have to remove it to do this job, but it does help just to unbolt it and move it out of the way. Uh, make sure your main power switch is off. You know, your fuel pump's not running at all because you're going to be breaking into the fuel system. Uh, make sure the truck the truck is stable. The wheels are chalked. Park brakes set because you do have to get under it uh, for just one part. Um, so let me explain the flame heater. Um, I guess I, I should start in here at the beginning of it. The flame heater is your intake manifold heater. It heats the intake air charge during really cold temperatures to help aid in uh, combustion in sub-zero temperatures. So this is your switch for it and it's normally off and it's only a momentary switch you see it, it doesn't stay on or it shouldn't okay so you're only supposed to use that when you're cranking the truck um you know as the motor's spinning you're holding that and it's if it works it's supposed to be creating a flame inside the intake elbow so um over here on the other side and most of the time the problem with these is just that they leak this is your flame heater so you've got the nozzle here and you've got a spark plug right here yes that's a spark plug um, what it does is when you hit that switch it comes uh, into here you've got a small fuel pump and a coil for the spark um, so when you hit that switch, it energizes both of those. It sends fuel to your nozzle here and spark here. And uh, it's supposed to create a flame inside this elbow, which, as I said, it heats your intake air charge. So when you're deleting that, the place to start is over on this side. That's your injector pump. Now, it's not any of these top side lines you've got to worry about. It's actually down below it on the boost pump. Um, you see right here, this is your shutoff cover. The boost pump is directly below it, and you can just see right there, that is your fuel feed for the flame heater. And I'll show you underneath. And yes, this has been leaking, which is why I was out here fixing it today. Okay, so this is your main fuel supply for the injector pump from the tank. This is the inlet of the booster pump, and this right here is the fuel supply line for the flame heater. So what you do is you take that little line off right there, and you take that fitting out, and you plug that with a quarter inch NPT plug. Now you can use a hex or an allen or a square head plug, it, brass, steel, stainless steel, it doesn't matter, as long as it stops fuel from coming out right there. So, you do away with that, and on the side of the block down there, not sure if I can get to where you can see it, but, okay, right there, that thing is the filter for your flame heater supply. So you want to take that off and throw that shit away too, and you're following the line up from that. This is the supply, and you see it goes over to your pump. The pump is under this cover. Everything under this cover comes off and goes in the trash. So from the pump, you've got your small line that goes down to the nozzle. Um, and then from the nozzle coming back, the larger line, that's your return. And you see it tees into your injector return line circuit. So what you've got to do here is you get rid of this T altogether. You get rid of this line and this line, and you just go between the two with another piece of quarter inch DOT line 
you need two new crush fittings, um, crush uh, ferrules, and you can reuse these two nuts. Um, that's all you need to get rid of to take the fuel uh, side of the system out of the equation. If, if your nozzle over there is leaking onto your turbo or threatening to cause a fire or if you think it might be leaking inside the elbow and it's smoking a lot and running funny, um, all you really have to do is plug it down there and uh, run you a new line right there. And you can leave all that stuff on there. Um, but I suggest just doing away with it because there's no point in leaving it on there if it doesn't work. So, you've done all that. You've taken these half-inch bolts out on both sides and you've taken all that off and thrown it away. Um, and now listen, this is not the only way you'll see this set up, okay? Um, there are others that are bolted to your uh, water manifold bolts. There's some that uh, the pump is bolted up here and the coil is bolted back there. there there's a few different ways they were set up. Uh, but you've only got one power lead in, okay? And that power lead tees off and powers both of them. So once you uh, do away with that, you can cut that off and heat shrink it, wrap it up, tie it up, tape it up, whatever. Just, just, just remember that it was only hot when you hit that switch, so it's not really super dangerous. Um, so you've gotten rid of all of that, and all you're left with is the nozzle and the spark plug and the intake elbow. I've got another intake elbow here to kind of show you the deal. Um, so, the complaint with these most of the time, the most common failure is they will leak out of the end here and drip right on the turbo. And there are guys that have lost these trucks to fires just because of that on the side of the road, okay? Uh, it's, it's a big issue. You definitely don't want fuel dripping on your turbo exhaust housing. Uh... The other, as I mentioned earlier, is sometimes the, the, um, whatever, the valve inside of here will go bad, spring gets weak, or whatever, and, um, it starts leaking low-pressure fuel into the elbow, which just makes your truck smoke and, and run funny. Uh, so you take that out, and you take the spark plug out, and you throw that away. Then that leaves you with two big gaping holes in the elbow, right? Just like that. So, there's been a lot of debate about what size the threads on these are online over the years. And uh, I'm here to tell you that there are different sizes from manufacturer to manufacturer, year to year. It's not just there's only these two sizes of, and that's it, okay? Um, that's the, I can tell you for a fact, there are different sizes. Um, now, obviously, these two are different sizes, but I'm talking about you'll have another set of two different sizes on another elbow. So it's not um, it's not a concrete subject on the size of these and the thread pitch. Um, I can tell you that most of them, in my experience, the spark plug one, that's a 3 8 national pipe thread. And uh, you see it threads in there nicely, plenty. So there's, uh, there's no doubt that that is, in fact, 3 8 national pipe thread. Now this one, um, there are some that are a metric 20 by 1.5. There are some that are a straight O-ring boss thread, it seems. There's some that are like a hydraulic thread. Um, the solution, as far as I'm concerned, is to take a half-inch NPT. He's out for a ride on a nice day, February 2nd, and it's like 80 degrees out here. Um, you can do it two ways. You can either run a half inch NPT pipe tap in here and use some thread sealant and a, a, a pipe plug, or you can just put some sealant on a half inch pipe plug and run it in there um, and let it cut its own threads because it is aluminum and uh, as long as you don't put too much of a bind on it, it's not going to crack. Uh, just remember, you're only putting like 20 pounds of boost at the very most through this so it's not like you've got to really really uh, wrench it down in there and get it super tight and crack the thing uh, make sure you use plenty of good thread sealant and all 
And, and look, these are just pieces that I'm using for an example to show you that they thread in because uh, I don't actually have any pipe plugs this size right now. Um, now I will, I will show you, you see there, there's two different sizes of threads. Um, I think this actually may have been that metric 20 um, by 1.5 but as you see this threads in plenty just fine and uh, it was like that when I took this elbow off that engine so uh, I'm not the first one to do this anyway um, uh, lots of guys wonder how to delete the flame heater you know not really any videos that I'm aware of out there that shows you how to do it or explains it. So I hope uh, this is helpful to you. And uh, if you got any questions, go ahead and post them up in the comments. I'll, I'll get back to you on it as soon as I can. Answer it as completely as possible. Thanks for watching, guys. If you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel. Like the video if you found it helpful. And I'll see you on the next one. Later.